As far as I'm concerned, the most important thing about any suit is the stitch. Without a stitch, it would just be a bunch of little bits of neoprene. There's a few different kinds you can go for. Commonly and historically, the most prolific has been the flat lock stitch. This is a typical locking stitch. It's very common in wetsuits, probably. <laughs> the flat lock's definitely the most common for the wetsuits because, well, it's cheap, it's easy. Um, not to be confused with the overlock, which differs in the sense that instead of butting the two materials together and then putting a stitch top and bottom, it gets two and folds them up and then stitches them. That means you've got this big raise. If you look on your shirt, without getting naked, you'll see this big seam on the inside. That's the overlock. Having that on the inside of the wetsuit is probably about as painful as you can get. You will see the overlock being used in the really cheap suits, but for me the choice between flat lock and overlock is a no-brainer. Not only are you going to be pressed to find the overlock because it's not very comfy, but because it's not very comfy nobody wants to wear it. The flat lock lives in pretty much all your entry level suits. It is quite durable because it's got more stitching than a quilt, but what you've got to bear in mind is because this is a stitch that penetrates the seam, or the neoprene in the case of the wetsuit, you're going to end up with a million tiny little holes through that suit. Every little seam here is free to take in water. In my opinion, the flat lock should only really be used in the summer suits because of that flow of water. And until we brought out the Adreno surf suits, you wouldn't find a GBS or a sealed seam anywhere near that price range. Next up is the glued and blind stitch seam, or GBS. This suit Start, this seam style commonly lives in the middle of the range, but it's the cheapest sealed seam you'll get. As far as I'm concerned, this is the bee's knees. You can get more durability out of a taped seam, which we'll go into, but for stretch, price and seal, you can't really beat them. These stitches work by using a hooked needle, and you're, you're only penetrating through about maybe a third or a half of the rubber. That means the internal, or the external, depending on the suit, has no penetration due to pinholes. That means that that seal isn't going to allow water through. The problem then arises that you've got half of the seam without any stitch or anything. So that's where the gluing comes in. What they then do is glue the remaining seam and what that provides is A, a seal, but B, a lot more durability. You'll see with this stitch, it's allowed to grow. This is what provides the glued and blind stitch suit with the most amount of stretch. What you get is the most amount of stretch, best price, but Compared to the step up, which is a taped seam, they're not quite as durable. A little hidden bonus with the GBS seam is when you look at the necks on these suits, there's no stitching here. When you've got a flat lock suit that's got a million little stitches along there, think about every time you're looking around, that little stitch is going to be rubbing on you. And that, after two hours, four hours, three weeks, is going to get pretty painful. Bear in mind that when you're looking through your suits, there's going to be a lot of different names, a lot of jargon, basically, for the kind of seam. There are only three major types. You've got your lock stitch, flat lock, and your overlock. You've got your blind stitch, which is pretty much always glued, but sometimes you'll find a double blind, or a double blind and glued, or a glued and blind and taped. But realistically, it's all the same stitch. The only downside with the GBS is because it's so furiously stretchy, over time what you'll find is the glue itself will wear out. That's because glue doesn't tend to stretch. It is slightly elastic, but nothing compared to the stitch or the rubber. So the problem with the GBS seam is that because you're putting it under so much strain, you tend to develop little pinholes or tiny little holes within the glue throughout the life of the suit. They say this can occur between 100 and 150 surfs, but it depends more on how you're looking after it. These, this idea of the pinholes occurring in the cracks is what leads us into the sealed seams. More often than not, a sealed seam is simply a glued and blind stitch seam where they reinforce with a piece of tape. This tape doesn't increase stretch, doesn't really do anything other than the fact that a second glued seal. What's really good about these is, as they can separate, all you need to do is just whack on some glue and seal that back down. It's not going to affect the performance of the suit, it's just going to increase the life of the suit. I do like the sealed seams, they are the most durable, they are the flagship seam, but overall they tend to limit the stretch a little bit. But without that they wouldn't perform their job. To sum up the tape seam, it's basically a glued and blind stitch seam that's going to last a bit longer. It does look pretty sick too. It is in all the flagship suits um, and there's different kinds of taping. This one here is more common. It's a lot wider, so there's a lot more adherence and it'll generally keep that, those pinholes away for a lot longer. 
you can be assured that no water will penetrate that seam until you can physically see that that rubber is peeling off and that takes a long time. With this seam being much wider, it is a lot more durable because there's more adherence but it is limited in stretch. That's mainly because of the material but also because of the stitch underneath it. There are a few variations on the tape seam but the only big difference is whether or not they have a seam underneath the taping. There are a few companies that will use what's essentially like an I-beam. So you've got your two bits of neoprene coming up and then there's tape on top, glue in the middle and tape on the bottom. That's the stretchiest, most waterproof and most durable seam on the market. You'll only find that in your flagship suits. There's no straight answer for anyone but just bear in mind that your flat locks, they'll let water through. Your blind stitches and your tape seams, they won't. If you're going to go up to a suit with a good seam, it's got to fit like a glove. You can have the tightest seams in the world, but if your neck's open, there's water coming in, it's no good. Thanks for listening, and if you've got any more questions, just come in, Brisbane, Sydney or Melbourne, or jump online. We've got live support there, so website's www.wetsuitwarehouse.com.au. Check us out. Got all the wetties.